When I started off, I didn't even know what satire meant and I wasn't interested. It was a case of survival. It was a case of getting off that stage before the police caught you, getting into a car that wasn't fast, without lights, and getting away with it. Um, I think the only reference to satire in my life was with Lenny Bruce and the work he did in America. And he had the ultimate definition of satire, which was satire is tragedy plus time equals satire. Uh, and so I was always aware that my material would never be satire because I had to put on stage what was happening 10 minutes before, to this day. Um, I'm uncomfortable with satire today because it doesn't really mean anything today. In the 60s, satire was a very important word to describe the way to reflect the absurdity and the obscenity of, of the world. But the world was very normal in those days. Women who were pregnant didn't have bombs in their prams to blow themselves up in supermarkets and take 100 people with them. And so in the old days, satire had to be the clown with a purple nose and green hair. So people saw it. Today, the world has got a purple nose and green hair, so the satirist or the satirist, the satirical character has got to be real. But everything has got to be reflected in the reality of where we are now. Bad news is no news if it's old news. And bad news sometimes doesn't work on stage because people don't want to know about bad news. And so very often, the material you use, they don't know what I'm talking about. I have to also have a balance of, of attack. 49% anger, 51% entertainment. If it's the other way around, you're not going to come to me. My whole, my whole mission on that stage is to get you there. I mean, I must seduce people to come to me and not watch Game of Thrones and not watch House of Cards. They've got to leave their house at night, set their burglar alarm, feed their Rottweilers, load their guns, reverse their four-by-fours out of the driver, hoping that the Nigerians don't run in when they drive out, risk their life in the Johannesburg traffic, which means they become a racist within 40 seconds, find the theater, park their car, kiss their car goodbye, get their tickets, sit in the auditorium, and then what do I do? Do I bore them with compromise? Am I politically correct? Or do I have to take them out of their world into my world and get them to laugh at the things they don't even want to think about. Maybe my menu is people laugh at fear. You know, there's a difference between comedy and humor for me. Comedy is the joke. You laugh, ha ha ha, but you don't have to remember the joke unless you want to tell it to somebody else. Humor is very seldom funny. Humor is laughing at fear because you've confronted that fear and you realize it'll never be taller than you. It'll kill you, but you've got your eye on it. If you look away, it becomes so tall and so big, you'll never confront it, and it'll win. And that is the major issue for me in the world today. Fear of opinion, fear of being labeled wrong. I say something and they call me a racist. What do I say? I say nothing. So where do we actually go with satire? I mean, are we going to be satirical and people just turn the page or walk out? Or are we going to actually entertain them and bring them right in and actually put the paint on their faces as well until they suddenly look like the people that they don't want to confront? That's why I do characters, and I do it on the stage, going into the characters, having my little boxes there. For the, since the old days, I wouldn't leave the stage because the police were hanging around, and I thought, if you're going to take me, take me in the light. It might be the best sketch in the show. You know, if you shoot me, do it properly so that people can remember it, you know. And when they threatened me on my answering service, which is probably the first answering machine in Johannesburg in 1981-82, they would say, <coughs> Peter, listen, Peter, guys, we've got to, listen, you, you can't do this. Hell, I can't talk in this machine. You know, crap. And I would put that on stage the next performance. And the audience laughed. And I laughed. And the moment you laugh at your fear, it's less fearful. Because apartheid will never, ever come back again under the same name. But don't underestimate the inventiveness of bad politics. Of course it will be back. It made money for a political elite then. It'll make money for a political elite now. It won't be the segregation of color. We've done that. It'll be the segregation of language, if suddenly everything is in Zulu. Segregation of tradition. Segregation of toll gates in Gauteng. So the point is, be aware of how clever politicians have become. 
Democratically elected governments are using democratically accepted ways to destroy democracy. It's happened in Russia, it's happening in America, it's happening in the UK, it's happening in France, it's certainly happening in South Africa. And it's the young people who have to clean the sandbox of the shit of what we're doing now. Offending people is a triumph. I want to offend everybody, but not all the time. That's too exhausting. So you have to have equal opportunity satire. Get to the left, go to the right, go to the white, go to the black, go to the colored, go to the ANC, go to the Freedom Front, go to the Muslim, carefully. But you always use humor as that weapon of mass distraction. People don't expect to remember what they laugh at. Um, and offending somebody means you've rattled their cage. You've said something that they, oh, you can't say that because I believe this and you've said that, so who's right and who's wrong? You know, people say, you, you know, you've changed people's minds. God help me, I don't want to do that. It's not my job to change anything. I need to make you forget the things that you are suffering from today and be entertained. But if you leave and you suddenly think, Christ, I've actually, what did I, why did I laugh at that? I don't want to think about that. But I thought about that. F freedom is fragile and it flies away. Uh, and I get very nervous when we talk about freedom of expression and don't express. Freedom of speech, but no speech.